Hey guys, it's Mountain Walk, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Popper. That's right. This is a format I've never really gotten into too much. I've certainly known about it for quite some time, um, but recently I got into it, and boy, do I like it. There's something about it. There's just something about it. Maybe it's the aesthetics, right, of just all of these cards you never have gotten to use, or at least at least haven't gotten to use for a while. Maybe there's just things that are just so cool and good that you like a lot. I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say exactly what is it about it, you know. Maybe it's just all the commons, the lower sort of power level, but not really. I mean, who knows? Lots of good stuff going on here. Um, maybe it's that there's no planeswalkers. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this uh, mono black pomper deck. Um, definitely a sweet deck, hard to, to really sort of uh, um, describe, but we'll say it's just basically a mid-range deck. All right. Okay, so uh, this is definitely a format popper I've gotten into recently uh, with some of my friends playing online, um, which is really sweet. Um, and and I, haven't, uh, I haven't played too much, but I've seen a couple decks which I've liked quite a lot. Like, I think I like basically every deck I've seen, right? There's something about it um, that is so appealing. You know, maybe it's just the aesthetics. Maybe it's just that it's all commons. Maybe it's just that there's no planeswalkers. Um, and there's most of the, the crazy stuff's already banned. So maybe maybe it's that. Who, who knows? Who knows? But um, I've, I've just uh, found a mono black deck online, so I'm just uh, copy-pasting stuff. Um, and of course, I really like how cheap it is. So cheap. I'm probably gonna go crazy and make like, you know, 10 decks or something like that. But like, um, you know, the decks being like 30, 20 to 30 bucks, you know, around the low end or something. Um, that's really appealing to me. I like, I like cheap stuff. I like just being able to put decks together very cheap and play with my friends and not have to worry about it and not have to double sleeve them or whatever. Um, so that's really appealing to me. I like that too. So there's a lot going on in Popper that I think is really sweet and really cool. And of course, here you can see Chainer's Edict. Chainer's Edict, of course, isn't uncommon, but Popper legality is determined by if a card was ever printed at a common in any set. And of course, Chainer's Edict was printed as a common in the Vintage Masters set. Off the top of my head, it was reprinted um, as an uncommon too in paper once or twice or something but yeah so um yeah you'll, you'll see random things like uh uncommons in the deck even though popper of course is only commons um again legality is determined by whatever uh if the card has ever been printed as a common so yeah which is great because i love chainer's edicts and i uh, i can't wait to play with them all right so let, let's start here it's got this sweet Super sweet mono black deck. Um, I mean, look at this stuff. You know, we just got a bunch of value creatures, right? Every single dude just does value stuff, which is awesome. A pile of removal, change the edict, of course, which flashes back, which is great. Um, and then, of course, sign and blood, great card draw. Um, did I say utility creatures? Obviously, utility creatures. And then, of course, suffocating fumes, which is. Uh, asymmetrical removal, um, which is great, and then also cycles, which is cottage and swamps and bajuka bog, really great stuff here. And of course, sideboard is full of graveyard hate, um, card draw, removal, but uh, some more discard, and then some more discard and ninjas and all that good stuff. So, lots of good stuff going on here. Okay. So you're probably wondering what's so great about this stuff. Well, something like Suffocating Fumes is an instant speed, asymmetrical board wipe, of course, and it uh, cycles, which is great. Thor of the Black Rose gives you Monarch, which of course is a card drawing engine, and of course can take out bigger creatures, things like that. Very nice, very sweet. And of course, Witch's Cottage, which is a really sweet land that um, late game can help you recur things like your, your gray merchants or, or something like that. Um, very sweet, very powerful there. Good stuff. 
Okay, now here's stuff that could be included um, in, in some of these builds. Maybe instead of uh, Dusk Legion Zealot, you could play Ravenous Rats, right? Um, obviously, Rats is, I mean, they're, they're both card advantage. Rats doesn't obviously make you lose any life. Has better art, of course, three different arts even. Um, so it does really cool stuff. Um, but obviously there's diminishing returns on discard. So, you know, that that's an interesting choice, but um, I love rats. I love all the rats. I'm a big fan of rats. I'm a, I'm a big relentless rat guy. I've been a big relentless rat guy since relentless rats was released, which was fifth on, I guess I've really liked plague rats too, but well, anyways, um, <laughs> ravenous rats, definitely an option. Icequake, of course, a great option. There's actually a, a decent amount of actual decks needing to play snow covered lands. So three mana kill a land also they lose a life. That's great. And look at that awesome Richard K. Ferguson art. Uh, Unearth, again, another great option for a couple couple slots, you know, um, like uh, Witch's Cottage, uh, it's recursion. Um, although this one puts it directly into play if it's three or less, which is a uh, couple guys. So that's pretty good too. And of course, if it's dead, it cycles. Really wonderful. I love uh, Unearth. What a great card. And of course, we have Crypt Rats. This is uh, probably would take up slots from something like uh, the, the Fumes, Suffocating Fumes. Um, and uh, yeah, because it's A, it can attack, of course. Uh, but B, it's also Reach. Um, and of course, it can certainly deal more than, you know, minus one, minus one, or I should say one damage to everything. So, yeah, and of course, since the deck is mono black, it has no problem producing tons of, of, of mana to, to pump into Crypt Rats, so it can act like a fireball and, and things like that. Um, and gosh, look at that art. E even, I actually really like the 7th edition um, art too, which is the same one they use for Modern Horizons. Bunch of evil looking rats. Oh boy, super scary. Okay, so, uh, Another big part, of course, as you can see here, our good friend, Gray Merchant of Asphodel. This is definitely more of a, a mid-rangey sort of style deck. And uh, Gray Merchant is great. It's got a, you know, five mana, two fours, pretty good stats um, for, for something that needs, needs to hold the ground. And uh, of course you, you drain them for a bunch and you gain a bunch. I mean, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and you know, this deck is just filled with uh, all sorts of removal and, and discard and things like that that um, facilitate those sort of things, or even, of course, land destruction if you need it. Um, so basically answers to most stuff. And of course, black even has um, enchantment removal, things like uh, Farika's Liberation. Libation? Libation? Something like that. Um, of course, like I said, there's lots of recursion card draw, so obviously Sign and Blood's a big one draw to lose two life, or you can even use it as a two mana shock on your opponents. Um, of, of course, there's piles of rats here. Makes you want to run uh, rat colony, um, <laughs> which would be sweet. Um, mana is great, right? Uh, just have a couple bajuka bogs, which is pretty nice. You know, just uh, mostly a free roll. Um, and of course, the witches cottages are great too. Um, obviously, you know, sometimes they can screw up your sequencing, but uh, typically on turn turn four, they'll come to play untapped and get you stuff back and, and all that great stuff. So yeah, the mana's great. We've got good utility lands that do stuff, so that's awesome. I mean, it's really just a, a really cool mid-range deck. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's got a lot going for it, answers a lot of stuff, can do all sorts of cool things, makes them lose life, you gain life, you do the life for cards thing with Phyrexian Rager and so on, like um, you can't lose. Just so cool. Just so cool. Um, yeah, there you go. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there, there's not a lot to say. Like I said, I haven't played this deck yet, but I was so taken with the deck. I thought it was so cool and interesting. I really liked it a lot. I was like, oh boy, I have to do a thing about this. I mean, there's so much cool stuff you can play, but you can play so many cool old cards. You can you can just, um, Phyrexian Rager? When was the last time anyone played Phyrexian Rager? Oh, so great. So cool. Um, getting Monarch and fighting over Monarch is sweet. 
man, what a what a nice deck, what a nice deck. So, yeah, that's, that's basically it, guys. So, uh, yeah, you, you guys should definitely play Popper. It's cheap, it's super fun, it's super cool. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're a big fat rat. Um, and uh, have a nice day.